Whew, I don't know if you can tell, but it is hot today and sitting through a 60 minute boil to brew some beer is going to be more than I can bear. So what do you say we do something where we don't have to boil anything and still come out with something refreshing and lovely? Oh, let me get ready first. Let's talk about Nectar of the Gods. All right, so today we are talking about mead. And mead is one of the oldest beverages of all time. It could very well be the first alcohol dating back 9,000 years ago. However, we don't actually know that, but you know, as long as there's been bees and water and bacteria capable of fermenting, we can assume that this happened naturally. One rainy night, the water gets mixed in with some honey and wildly ferments. Humans discover it the next day, drink it, get drunk, love it so much they continue to make it and dub it nectar of the gods. And meat is a great thing to make yourself because it can happen naturally in nature. It makes it so simple for us to make it at home. It's pretty inexpensive to get started as well. There's kits online that will get you pretty much all of the gear you need, so all you have to buy is the honey and the water. And while those kits online are convenient and probably decently priced, I would say if you have a homebrew supply store, go there first because a lot of times they can match or beat that price and you'll be supporting a local homebrew store. Now let's talk about the main component here for your mead and that's going to be the honey itself. Now, what you're really gonna want is something like a raw honey from a farm. If you can go to a farmer's market or directly from the source, you'll see this one doesn't have a barcode or nutrition facts. It came straight from the farm and this is going to be a great raw honey to use. However, if this is hard to get, it's uh, just a little bit too expensive, anything like that, your basic grocery store honey is going to be fine as well. Here is one that I got from Costco. It's five pounds, it's pretty cheap, and it's a wildflower honey. It's just not raw. I know when it comes to honey, that can throw a lot of words at you, you know, things like organic, raw, farm certified, grade A. There's a lot of buzzwords that they use to try and get you to buy the proper honey and tell you that it's better than other honeys. So you're gonna wanna do a little bit of research and figure out what all those words mean to you and what you really want to use as your main honey source. I've used the organic raw, I've used the straight from the source honey, and I've used the pasteurized forms as well. All of them make very decent mead and kinda of come down to just what you want to invest in in your personal preference. And so once we have our honey picked out, the last thing to get is some distilled water. Since we won't be boiling any water, you do want distilled or at least reverse osmosis filtered so that you know that it's clean and sanitary. If for any reason you're unable to get some distilled or filtered water, uh, you can just bring your water to a boil, let it sanitize for like 10 minutes, and then just let it come down to the temperature that we're gonna be mixing in the honey. I know, I know, I know, I'm talking a lot here and I'm not actually showing you how to make it, so let's get to it. Let's do the fun part and make the mead. Okay, so first things first, let's get our equipment all clean. I got a nice little two gallon plum wine fermenter here that I'll be using, and we're looking to use about two to three pounds of honey per gallon. So my five pounds of honey here will be great for that. You wanna get some water warm and let the honey soak so that it has more of a fluid property when we pour it in. This will just create so much easier to uh, mix and pour and you won't be left waiting. We're only gonna be heating up half of our water first, so reserve the other half and chill it for for the end of this process. Once our water gets up to about 150 to 170, it is time to add in the honey. And so this will be a very quick and easy process. Once the honey is all in, we will want to mix it by hand using a whisk or something to get a lot of air incorporated. Since we won't be boiling this, there won't be natural aeration within that boil process. And we kind of got to do it by hand. So give it a nice hard stir, let some bubbles form, uh, make sure you're mixing a lot of air in there for the yeast to use when you go into the fermenter. Another good practice here is to reserve half of the water in the fridge or freezer. I have my other gallon of water here in the freezer and that's gonna allow me to cool down the must right away. I'm not gonna have to do any sort of ice bath or anything like that. The two temperatures will counteract and I should be close to a temperature that is pitchable for the yeast and safe to pour into my glass fermenter. And next we'll be rehydrating our dry yeast, just getting some 90 degree water and mixing that in, letting it sit for about 20 minutes. And there's a lot of different yeast strains you can go with here. I'm going with a white wine yeast. Uh, champagne is very popular. 
Um, if you can get to a brewery supply store, you can ask some questions and figure out what yeast to go with if you're going for a sweeter mead or a drier mead. The yeast you choose should play a big role into the final taste of the mead. Now, because this is only made with distilled water and honey, there's not a lot of nutrients present, so yeast nutrient is going to help here. It's not completely necessary, but it will create a much healthier yeast activity in the mead. And that's it, we are done. So let's get that gravity reading. Remember, we did about two and a half pounds per gallon, and we are at a good 0 0.08 or maybe like a 10% ABV here. And now we're gonna let this sit and ferment for about six weeks. After a day or two, you should see a lot of bubbling activity this was taken just the day after this process and you can see it's very active so there it is pretty simple very easy and a great way to get started in homebrew or a great hobby on its own you know you can do so many different things with this you can add mint and hibiscus things like that to the water before you even add the honey and giving it a completely different flavor profile you can add berries or fruit and let that soak in the mead and take on those flavors. There's a lot of different things you can do with a lot of playing around and one of the great things about this as well is that you're dealing with a one gallon or two gallon batch, a very small form factor and that allows you to try a bunch of different things. You know you can have three or four batches going at a time and just sort of rotating them out, getting a bunch of different flavors, figuring out what you like, what you don't like, and sharing them with friends, getting notes, doing different things, and pushing the envelope over and over and over again. It's a great hobby, it's a delicious drink, and that's, that's it, you know, I mean, what more do you need to know? Go out there and try it for yourself. That's gonna be it for me. Thank you so much for joining me, and I will see you in the next one. Cheers.